All right, so as you guys can see, I beat up my Element React 87s pretty good. I wanted to give these a nice wear before I give you guys a pro and con video uh, after wearing, and hopefully you guys will learn something in this video about these shoes. What's going on guys, Hess here, collectivekicks.com. If you guys want to shop this week's top sneaker deals that I post on Twitter and Instagram, check the link in the description and happy shopping. If you guys are interested in buying these, check the link also in the description. You can buy them from places like eBay and StockX. But in this video, I wanted to cover the pros and cons of the Element React 87 after wearing and let you guys know my thoughts. Also, shout out to Six in the City. He actually mentioned that the two names of the Element React, which I didn't understand, was Franktum which is the 87, and there's another Element React 55, which is cesium, I believe, I don't know how to say them, but those are supposedly the two most reactive metals on the periodic table of elements. So maybe that's where they get the React Element 87 from. And to me, that's kind of a miss from Nike. They should have had the branding definitely better and more clear for us consumers out there. But before we get into the pros and cons, let's take a look at the shoes and see how badly I beat these things up. And yes, I'll wash my hands after I get done with this video, but you can see the midsole is super dusty and the sole is definitely worn down a little bit here and there. It actually held up better than expected. You can see little sections here kind of wore down and broke. Sections here, the toe section here, got a little bit of drag right here as well. But all in all, like I'm like, actually it did better than I expected. This is one of the con things that I'll get into for sure, because it looks really bizarre. It looks like I walked through a dust storm in these things but I didn't. All in all, the, the upper maintained the same crappy shape that it has because it doesn't have any structure, as you can see. But um, but these are them, man. So let's go ahead and get into the pros and cons. Let's go ahead and start off with the positives. The first pro for me is it's really an exciting new model by Nike. It's awesome that they created something new, especially for the lifestyle side of things. And I love the overall design elements pun intended, of this silhouette. I'll get into the design more with the other pros, but all in all, I love the fact that it's an exciting new model that has sparked a lot of interest for consumers out there. The next pro is it's the best all around Nike React model out of the four that have released thus far. I've tried all four of them, and I have to say that this is definitely the one that you feel the React in the most. I love the fact that it has a wider track base on the bottom, as well as the huge sole of React. It's just the most comfortable out of all of them. It definitely has the most lifestyle vibes to the shoe and it's appropriately placed in the right shoe. The next pro is the overall style to me is dope. I love everything down to the weird little pods that come up to the side of the shoe that actually wrap around to the bottom for the traction. I like the placement of the Nike swoosh, the materials that they used for the heel counter, the added layer of suede for the laces. I even like the clear aspect of the shoe just because of the variety of different ways you can wear it if you decide to dress these right with the appropriate socks. For me, this is definitely a really stylish new model and it's hard to bring a new model to the table nowadays and Nike really has done a tremendous job this year in doing so. The next pro, which is an extension of what I was just talking about with the style, is the fact that they use so many different layers for the upper. A lot of times now you have a fly knit upper paired with a sole and that's like the new sneaker technology of the new sneaker. And in this case, they actually took it to the next level. It has an off-white vibe because it's deconstructed in a sense. You could see that it has an underlay here uh, for the toe area. There's that baseball stitching and the Frankenstein style stitching or whatever here. Then you have like layers here and here for the laces. You have another layer here on the back and back. And then even a little suede here and a pull tab. They just did a really good job of making it look complex, but in a simplistic way. And I think that that's something that's hard to achieve, but they did a good job with that. Taking it back to the comfort of the shoe, the cushioning comfort on the shoe is absolutely excellent. It's top three Nikes, in my opinion, that I've ever worn. And I've worn hundreds and hundreds of pairs of Nikes through the years. So to me, that speaks pretty loudly to what Nike's done with this model and the fact that they had the placement in the right areas. And it's wide foot friendly. Again, I love that. It's just all around a great pair of sneakers. A lot of people want to know what the other two are above this shoe. The Vaporfly 4% is definitely my number one most comfortable Nike I've ever tried on, comfort-wise with the midsole technology. I don't even know what the second one would be. I just don't want to say this is number two because I would forget one of the other ones that are out there. And if you guys can think of something that's more comfortable than these, leave a comment in the comment section. As I mentioned, the React is massive on the heel and it's just really well felt. One more pro worth mentioning is that these do fit true to size. I bought up a half a size thinking they would work and yes they actually do because I like having a little extra wiggle room in my toes as you guys already know. Uh, so nine and a half, ten, perfect. 
but uh, if I could do it again, I would definitely get a nine and a half. Another pro is the sole is actually a bit more durable than expected. Yes, I know it looks like trash because it's kind of worn down, but that's kind of the way Nike React does its thing. But the traction pattern and placement is actually better than expected. And it seems like it's definitely more strategic than it looks because it just looks really busy. Ultimately, it ended up being quite functional. And the last pro that I wanted to mention to you guys is the fact that this shoe is actually quite breathable. This upper doesn't look like it would be breathable because it is kind of like a plasticky sort of material. If you hold your hand inside of the shoe and breathe into the shoe, you can actually feel all of the breath. Like it's really, really breathable. So much better than I anticipated and definitely noteworthy. Now that we are done buttering you guys up, I'm gonna go ahead and get into some of the cons. The upper, I mean, let's just start there. I'll probably have five cons related to this upper, so just sit back and relax and listen. First things first is the fact that it's see-through. Yes, I know it's a pro, but it's also a con. To most people out there, it's just one that you have to coordinate with your outfits a little bit better. You absolutely, mega con, don't wear these without socks. It looks hideous, it looks just terrible always wear socks. But the other part of the upper that makes this material a con is the fact that it's just not stretchy. Like it's not stretchy at all. It's like insanely not stretchy. And that's a unique feeling for your feet. It feels very misplaced. Like you're used to be able to put your foot in and it's like, oh, this is cool. It like morphs to my foot a little bit here and there. But this like is the worst morph job ever to your foot. And an additional point to that is the fact that the upper is just extremely flimsy. Like it's really flimsy upper. There's no structure here. And you could see it kind of holds the like weird shape from it being wrinkled all over the place. It's just not overly attractive when it gets worn down quite a bit like this. And probably the most noteworthy and the oddest thing that I didn't think would be a con is the fact that it looks like there's dust underneath the shoe. Now this might not be the same on the sale pair. Maybe this is just one on the black pair, but I don't know if you could see this from the camera. It looks like there's dust underneath here, under the underlay of the shoe, as well as the underlay here, as here. It just looks terrible. It looks like these have been through a dust storm, but I haven't been running around in the dirt. Like this is crazy to me that it's so dusty underneath here. I'm gonna try to clean them up with the rejuvenator and see if I can make this go away, but I don't know if it's gonna work. And I'm not gonna blame this on the rejuvenator if it doesn't. It just seems very weird why this would be that way. Maybe it's because this material again is so breathable and you have an underlay. And because you have an underlay underneath a breathable material, it's gonna look like crap. So that is, I mean, buyer beware, I guess. If you don't care about that, not a big deal. But after you wear these a bit, you're like, dude, it's the most, it's like a pet peeve to look down and think your shoes are really dirty. And maybe they truly are because of the, the dirt that comes through, but it looks like trash. And But I know I'm not the only one that has had that problem for those that have had this shoe. Comment in the comment section if you've had this problem as well. Moving right along, now that we've had a lot of cons about the upper, the final thing to note about this upper is the tongue. The, the tongue in general, it holds the same properties and the elements of the entire upper, which is this flimsy crappy material that Nike has decided to charge a premium for. And they engineered it really, really well. I mean, it's breathable, but it's like one step forward, two steps back. You created something really breathable that's transparent. Good job, dude. But now you have something that's not <laughs> all the other things that I just said. Like it's flimsy, it doesn't hold structure. But when you slide the shoe on your foot, the tongue gets twisted like this super easily and then you're putting it on and then you have this problem here where it's just folded over and you're putting it in your foot. And it, I mean, it's, it's kind of like a mini thing but when you are a busy person and you wake up and you have to get somewhere quick, you can't really grab these shoes and throw them on unless you do and then it ends up like that on your foot and it's all folded over and uncomfortable. I don't know about you guys, but for me personally, I don't untie and tie my shoes every single day. I have them just where I want them and I usually just slip them on, which is why the Ultra Boost has been amazing for me because it's such an easy shoe to get on and off your foot. This is not an easy shoe to get on and off your foot. The tongue definitely gets twisted all the time. I will say that if you rock these with ankle socks, the heel collar actually does dig into your foot a little bit. I said in the original thoughts that this wouldn't happen because this is kind of like a felt material. And so it shouldn't really happen, but this is a felt material on the backing of it though is really kind of rough. And so if you wear this for an extended period of time, this does kind of wear down. Heel socks might not be the way to go with these, but in general, I don't think heel socks should be the way to go with these anyway, because you wanna wear the crew socks with the crazy designs on them and colors because it can really add a lot more to the shoe in general. Another con is the fact that these are definitely not weatherproof. Obviously the upper is extremely breathable, 
but because of that there was a little bit of a downpour one day and like my my feet were soaked because it rained in them like if somebody throws water on your shoe it's just gonna go splash like it's gonna drench your foot it's definitely not something that can take water very well that being said it's probably something that can dry really well because it's not like anything too crazy here but the other parts of it would be uh, wet and to go along with that the traction is not the best for rain either that's just with react in general though they don't handle weather very well especially like rain and the last con i wanted to mention to you guys i did say something about the laces already but related to that you have to lace these in order to really feel stable in the shoe because of the massive react on the shoe if you wear these loose it's gonna feel really wobbly on your foot. If you tighten down the lockdown, it actually makes it much, much better and much more appealing to you uh, as a person wearing the shoes. Unfortunately for people like me that just don't like to wear my laces snug, it kind of sucks having to do that for this pair of sneakers when I don't have to do it with like a bazillion others. So that's pretty much a summary of the pros and cons that I have to say about this shoe. As you notice, a lot of the cons had to do with the upper construction and that's really pretty simple fix from Nike to be able to change this material for the upper, change this tongue a little bit and you have an amazing shoe. The fact that they have the midsole technology down and it's really solid and it's really quite good, like that has a lot of room for promise. I love the overall aesthetics of the shoe. I just don't love the choice of materials in all aspects of them. It, there's some positives and there's some negatives to everything though. And at the end of the day, it's personal preference. And these are just some of the things that I wanted to mention to you guys. So to quickly go over some of the metrics for the shoe, I wanted to mention the fit for the shoe, I would say is true to size. I went half size up. Definitely wish I would have gone true to size. The cushioning for the shoe is really, really good in my opinion. I'd give it a four and a half out of five. It's better than the Epic React, in my opinion. Comparatively to the Adidas Boost, it feels more like the 9317s than the Ultra Boost, just a lot softer. As for responsiveness, because it's super big and super soft, I honestly don't feel it being really responsive. I know it's supposed to be React, so it's supposed to be responsive, but for me, I don't feel it. I'd give it a three out of five. The upper material, a two out of five, it's just, not good in my opinion. The weight of the shoe is nine ounces and I would give it a four out of five. The fact that they made these light as well as comfortable is a really big win in my opinion. The breathability of the shoe, I would give it four out of five. It is extremely breathable as I mentioned. The durability of the shoe, however, I would give it three out of five. It's extremely average. Stability of the shoe, I would give it three out of five and the traction, I would give it three out of five as well. Here's a kicker though, for the overall style of the shoe, I actually give it a five out of five. I think it is one of the coolest looking Nikes that we've seen on the market in recent times. Some people are like, I don't get what the hype is about these shoes. And for me, I'm from the beginning, I'm like, those are dope. I really want to see more. Some of the colorways I've seen forthcoming though look kind of terrible. So I'm glad to get a black and white colorway. This is just one of those ones that I really liked. And if they do the color blocking right on the upper, the fact that they have so many different variations and stuff that they can do on this, it's really gonna be a fun shoe to see where Nike takes it. And the final metric to cover is the overall value of the shoe at $160 retail. I would give this a four out of five. I think that there's a tremendous amount of value for this shoe. I do sound really negative because of the things that I don't like about the shoe, but I have to be honest with you guys is some of the things that I found painful. And my biggest complaint just is basically with the upper of the shoe. The overall shoe is just an amazing shoe though, and I really like what Nike is doing. And I think that if they change this upper to make it so it wasn't see-through, which I know they're gonna be end up doing anyway, like there's gonna be some cool things that, that are gonna be coming from this shoe. I do respect the see-through material though and like the underlays and I think that's a really cool idea. The execution of it on this just might not be worth it though. You might wanna just make those overlays with a leather or suede or nubuck version of these. I would definitely be down and I would definitely buy them. But, but that is my video. Those are my pros and cons and my after wearing thoughts of the Nike Element React 87s. Leave some comments, let me know what I got right, what I got wrong, what other comments you guys may have, and give the video a thumbs up if you guys found it informative. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new to the channel, and hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified of when my videos go live. I try to post videos five, six days a week. Also, if you guys do wanna purchase a pair of these, check the links in the description again. And thanks for stopping by and watching. At this time, if you guys want to click the screen and check out any of the other videos that you guys see, feel free to do so, and have a good rest of the day. Peace, guys.